You've heard the buzz about Cloud Foundry, but is it truly as easy for me to deploy my first application? As it sounds, is it possible to run Cloud Foundry on my laptop? If I'm a student, can I use Cloud Foundry? If I'm new to software development, can I use Cloud Foundry? If I'm shy and I don't like asking questions, can I use Cloud Foundry? You're asking good questions. Let's do this together right now. If today is your first day as a programmer, then you can learn Cloud Foundry. Or if you've been learning to program for 20 years, then you can thoroughly enjoy Cloud Foundry. I'm 44, have written software since I was 15, and have been thoroughly enjoying Cloud Foundry since I discovered it six years ago, and it is still exciting today. It would make me very happy after you've watched this video, and if you've enjoyed Cloud Foundry, let me know in the comments and we can discuss future videos. Now, in order to deploy your first app to Cloud Foundry, we're going to need two things. A Cloud Foundry CLI, a Cloud Foundry, and a first app. That's actually three things, but two of them sound the same. For Mac, Windows, and Linux, there are instructions to install. We start at the docs, we can follow through and all through this documentation is the installation instructions. Once you're done, you will have the CFCLI. I have version 6.43, you might have a later version of version 6 and depending, maybe in the future, uh, you're watching this and it's version 7, everything should work the same uh, for the examples we're going through today. In this video, we will use the CF Dev project to run a small Cloud Foundry on our local machine. <laughs> it's great. If you already have access to Cloud Foundry, that's great too. Stop showing off. Politely follow along with everybody else. Nod like you're enjoying yourself. The installation is slightly different for different machines, for Linux, but other than that, it is the same. We have two commands to run. Let's copy and paste the uh, plugin command to install the uh, CFDev plugin. Essentially, the way we're going to bring up CFDev is, is just a plugin to the CF command, which is very convenient. There's no other dependencies except for Linux and uh, read the read the uh, readme for those. And the second command is just CFDev start. Now, there's a little pause here as it uh, does some detection. You'll now need to uh, install your password for root access. And now this will take a long time depending on your internet speed. It's going to be downloading about 60 gig of uh, contents uh, and then setting up your machine. You'll be prompted to uh, contribute some telemetry. Please say yes to be helpful. And then it will uh, now boot up a VM and this is all behind the scenes, but it will take sometimes, say, half an hour to bring up a machine, start the processes. Everything that would happen in a production Cloud Foundry will happen on your laptop using a, uh, a transparent system called Bosch. None of this is important to us today, but come back. It'll be worth it. Incredibly, you have a full Cloud Foundry running on your laptop. And you know it's good because it's got ASCII art. This command here is everything we need to log in. We will cover what this does in a future video. So copy and paste that, and we will just be the regular user. The differences we'll come back to. See, so user and pass. Now, you normally will have a email as a username, but it's any text. So let's uh, be user, user. And the password is pass. And you're in. We are now good to go with our own Cloud Foundry on our own machine. And all we need now is a tiny app. I've linked the source code for our tiny app in the show notes. In a minute, we will deploy our tiny Hello World app to our Cloud Foundry. But first, let's do what all developers do. Let's run it locally. Now, our tiny little app is written in a programming language called Ruby. You might 
already have Ruby installed, or you might not. If you do, great. If not, you can use Docker and pretend you've got Ruby. I have Ruby installed, so I'll start here. In Ruby, we fetch the dependencies in our gem file with a program called Bundle. And the application starts up with a command called rackup. I can explicitly say what port I want. Um, and uh, if you're nuanced, it's more accurate to use uh, bundle exec to select which rackup command we want to use. And our application is running. And there is our application. I've gone the big font because big fonts make our application look better. If you do not have Ruby running locally, uh, we can use Docker. Everyone loves Docker because it's so easy. Having said that, the gist of what we're going to do is to create a Docker container using uh, the upstream Ruby image. Now, the first time you run this command, it will download that large image. Um, we do need to do slightly more than this. Uh, Docker is not like Cloud Foundry. It, it does not figure anything out. So we will need to tell it to run our two commands to bundle to download dependencies and bundle exec rack up um, to run the web process. We will spe specify the port so that we know how to pass through that traffic. Now, uh, that is not going to work. We need to wrap this in a shell command obviously, and then we will need to pass some flags. Uh, we've said that internally, we will listen on port 8080, therefore we need to uh, specify port 8080. Um, we may as well pass through port 8080 on the laptop, so we'll do that as well. That way, uh, localhost 80 will be what we're going to uh, run it on. Um, what else do we need to do? we will need to pass through the source code sitting on the laptop into our Docker container. Um, uh, so on, on my Mac, it's dollar PWD. I'm not sure what it is on a, on a PC. Um, we'll pass it through to an arbitrary folder called slash app. It's our container. We can do what we like. So that slash app is the starting folder of where all our commands are run. We use the uh, workspace flag to uh, set that up. And um, we're only going to want to run this for a little while and we'll make it interactive. We could use minus D for being a daemon, but we use minus T I, minus T minus I, uh, so that we can type control C and kill. And that is our uh, container. Obviously, I mean, you're a Docker person. You know how easy Docker is to use. There is our container. This is on port 8080 inside the container. We did pass it through uh, to the outside, so it didn't work because we also need to say to listen on the internal um, uh, network interface. Obviously, uh, I'm, this is sarcasm, but it's not obvious at all. This has taken me 15 to 20 minutes to figure out. And there is our big font Hello World app running inside Docker. I am sincerely unsure which is harder, figuring out how to install Ruby and running these simple commands or figuring out the flags for using Docker. Now that was all local. We haven't used Cloud Foundry yet. We have our tiny little app and we've run it twice locally like heroes and heroines. Now, unless you plan on FedExing your laptop to a data center, we do need to get your tiny app off your laptop and into a Cloud Foundry. Using Cloud Foundry the first time is easier than running it locally. A lot easier. We run CF push and we give the app a name. The deployment starts, we get allocated a route, upload our local files, and the process of Cloud Foundry automatically detecting, discovering our app uh, begins. 
determines for itself that it is a Ruby application. And downloads from the internet the dependencies that will be used to build our application, combining our source code, the Ruby interpreter, dependencies. It runs the bundle or bundle install command that we ran earlier locally. So we only need to do this process once we store the resulting artifacts in an item called a droplet, which is then used to start running our processes. All this behavior is happening on our Cloud Foundry, and in the end, we have a running application. First time you open an application from our uh, CF Dev SH or on this URL, your browser might get angry at you because uh, CF Dev has a self-signed HTTPS certificate, says that it's not secure. Today we will uh, give the browser permission to uh, ignore that. And we see our application running for the first time. Remember, big font makes our app look better. It is choose your own adventure from this point onwards. We could set up different URLs. We could add a database. We could scale the app up and run many copies in parallel. We could view the logs. We could SSH into the containers and poke around and see our process running. We could configure environment variables. Difficult things in operations made very easy. So much more to learn. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel and Follow along as we learn more and more about succeeding with Cloud Foundry.